You know, I know this is something that guys like Alpha Omega Sin has talked about already. I'm surprised Angry Joe hasn't talked about it yet. I'm sure he'll probably get to it in time. Um, I know School Attack has talked about it, but uh, you can pretty much look at it. These are basically my thoughts on Capcom having $152 million in the bank as of September 16th. Probably a little less now, if not a little bit more. But let's just say around 150 mil in the bank, if you will. All depend. Now, what are my thoughts on Capcom being in this situation? In this kind of financial situation. Now, we've all been in a, we've all known that companies, when they get into this scenario to where they only have a hundred and a certain amount of money. Now, we might, I mean, Individually, for people like us, when we look at $152 or around the 150 mil mark, we're, we're like hell. I mean, we're like heck. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. 150 mil, that's enough to pay off this house that, I, that me and my mom live in. That's enough for us to pay off this house, get a new car, whatever. You know, it's enough for my mom to... To settle down and say, and tell her job, hey, adios guys, I'm set for life, I'm retiring. You know, it's basically the kind of money that you essentially, for individuals like myself and her and anybody else, we look at it and we're like, hey, we'd be set for life. We wouldn't have to worry about much for a long time. Bills would be paid, we'd have, you know, nicer things, you know, help our family pay off their debts and stuff like that. difference between us and a company like Capcom. When a company like Capcom only has 152 mil in the bank, that's primarily saying, oh, well, uh, individually, uh, we have so many bills to pay, but we only have 200 in the bank. And we can't even do the rent, or we can't even pay the cable, we can't even do that. That's 152 mil is like 250, maybe 200, $250, or $500 to us at the most, in, as individuals. That's basically what it is. The 150 mil, or whatever they have in the bank right now, is like having five, two, 250, 250 to 500 in our banks. That's basically what it is. And you can't do much with that. You can't do much with that, especially when you have people hounding you to pay bills, to pay this, to pay that. And you also got to go out and buy groceries, you got to buy food and things. So it doesn't really last long. So the question is, how could Capcom allow themselves to get into this? Now don't get me wrong, I've, I've been a fan of Capcom. I like Capcom games. I mean, a great, I mean, to give you a great indication, when I lived in Lawrence, Kansas, there were several game exchange, and game, little game exchange shops across from where I lived, on the main, uh, main street, on, in, in, you know, in that in Lawrence, Kansas, called Mass Street, and all that, and of course, like I said, the Game Exchange and places like that. You know, there were several places, outlets in that city that allowed me to walk about, ride my bike, if you will, and just look around and see what they had to offer as far as used NES games or SNES games go. And I was able to get through a lot of these Rescue Rangers, Tailspin, and for the SNES. Bonkers. Those were my Capcom games that I got for those systems. And Capcom basically did a great job on them. Yeah, Tailspin's a little hard, but still they did a great job on them. You know, you take a look at DuckTales. That got remastered. Capcom was a part of that. And they did a great job on it when they first did it. You know, so I've been a fan of, so I've been actually a fan of them. When when Street Fighter II came out to the SNES and all that, and I finally was able to play it, I obtained a copy, even though I had to sell it back due to financial reasons, but still, I had a copy of Street Fighter II. And I enjoyed it. 
I mean, I have several Street Fighter games uh, downloaded on my Xbox 360. I have one Street Fighter game downloaded on my Wii system, on my original white Wii system. And they did great with those. But so, you think, so when you look back and you think, well, they did so great then, how could they be in such a hole now? Well, it's real simple. Even though they've attempted, even though they've proved, even though they've tried, Capcom still has this old school mentality. Now, last year or so, I tried to defend their decision to do Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. But when I look back on it, I realized that, yeah, I was trying to defend them, but in reality, they're the ones that dug themselves into this hole to begin with. I mean, yeah, you know, they could pretty much say, and anybody else defending them could pretty much say, like I did, and Capcom said themselves, that, hey, it was due to the tsunami in Japan and all that that we were pushed back, that our original plans to do a lot of this DLC got pushed back into being a physical disc. You know, yeah, you know, they could say that, and some of that might be true, some of that might be just to cover the butts. But the fact of the matter is, they're the ones that dug themselves into this hole. I mean, when I look back at Angry Joe's uh, rant on U UMVC 3, Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, you know, he does have a point. A lot of what was put on that disc could have easily been done as DLC. You know, a good example, obviously, is the Street Fighter 4 series. When this came out, when this came out, yeah, you had some downloadable people on here. Don't get me wrong about that. You did have some downloadables. But, here's the thing. They also did Super Street Fighter 4. And they did it where, yes, they added more characters. Along with, the, along with the characters that were on here, they added new characters, 10 new characters. They added all these different modes that people loved, that Joe actually liked himself. They added all these new modes. They added a replay channel, and this all could have easily been done, when you think about it, as DLC, as an additional DLC for this. And you know, he's defend, and here's the thing, he defends Super Street Fighter 4 because it's a, obviously he understands it's a tradition for Capcom to say, okay, let's just bring out another physical disc of Street Fighter, and let's call it Super. So, you know, obviously that's the only thing he defended. But I'm sure even he thought, well, wait a minute. Why do we need a Super Street Fighter 4 when they can easily do it for DLC? But again, again, all the modes, the replay channel and all that probably made a lot of sense to do one in separate, its own separate disc. But still, but still, this is one of the reasons, I believe, in my opinion, Capcom's in the hole that they're in. They're in the hole that they're in because they constantly stay glued to the old traditional ways. Now, I'm not saying things, I'm not saying it's, I'm not, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with sticking with the old traditional ways. Because if the old ways still work, why, why not, why not continue to use them? Why, why ignore them? Why not continue to use them? And that's obviously Capcom's mentality. And Capcom's, of course, not the only video game company that has that kind of mentality. Other video game companies out there have that same mentality as well. They have the mentality of, hey, we have these old school ways. Why not continuously use them and not turn our backs on them? They've worked in the past. Why not have them work again? You know? And, it's, again, it's understanding why video game companies like Capcom would do that. It's understandable. It's understandable. But, it's a different day and age. That's the problem. It's a different day and age for, for video games because technically, technically, ladies and gentlemen, You know, nowadays, you could easily make a game more.
more than what it was or what you originally had made it to be by doing the DLC. That's basically it. You could make the game more than what it is by using DLC, but again, I can understand maybe with the exception of Super Street Fighter 4 and all its modes and all that, that they did that, that that's the only reason they did it. When they could have easily just probably done DLCs, but still, I'm guessing maybe it was cheaper for them to do the disc deal, or was it? Because you see, now they got another, because get this, after Super Street Fighter 4, they had Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade. And that was a separate, I don't know if that was a separate disc or not, but here was the difference though. For Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade, you had two ways of getting it. You could have easily gone out and bought the disc, or you could download it as a DLC, which a lot of people pretty much said they should have dealt with Street Fighter 4 in the first place. And now, you have Ultra Super Street Fighter 4 coming, and that is going to be looked at it's two different ways. Either buy it as a physical disc, or download it as DLC for your Super Street Fighter 4 and Super Street Fighter 4 as arcade game. I mean, arcade disc. Yeah. Basically, it's something they should have done with this, but they didn't. And why? God only knows. But... To me, I think, in my honest opinion, them not going the DLC route is what's killing them. That, that's the thing. It's what's killing them. They need to go the DLC route because it's cheaper and more affordable to go. It's more cheaper and affordable to go in. Save them moolah. If you know what I mean. It saves them a lot of moolah. I mean, what do you think is the more cheaper route to go? Doing DLC or just putting out an expansion disc? Obvious answer is doing DLC. I mean, why do you think Joe? when ultimate, the ultimate version of this came out, went absolutely berserk. Why do you think he and everybody else went ranting crazy on this? It's real simple, because everything that the ultimate version had was originally supposed to be the DLC for this. And like I said, Capcom and people that defended it, and I tried to defend it, can say all they want. They can say that they tried, they can say it was the tsunami, partially the tsunami in Japan that prevented them from doing the DLC as originally planned. And that might be true in some cases, but still, you shouldn't allow Mother Nature, if you will, or tsunami to come basically prevent you from staying on schedule and saying, hey, we're still going to do the DLC. Because that way, you wouldn't have the rant and the complaints that people have been, gave you with this game. I mean, if you can do DLC for your Super Street Fighter 4 game, and maybe it's Arcade Edition, by making it's Arcade Edition a DLC as well as a separate disc, which I think is not a good idea, as well as do the same by making the Ultra Version DLC and a disc, which again I don't think is a good idea, then why can't you just done it with Marvel? Why couldn't you have done it with Marvel like you originally planned and, not, and basically tell yourself, hey, we're not going to let a tsunami prevent us from, be, from being on schedule. We, you know what would have been easier for Capcom is for them to come out and say, hey, look, the DLCs for all these 12 new characters and these new modes and all that, it's all going to be delayed due to the tsunami, so it will be coming, but it'll be coming a little, a little, it's going to be a little later than usual. 
If you if Capcom could have came out with a statement saying something like that, people wouldn't have ranted and they would have saved money. Because basically that's what's killing them. That's what's been killing them. Them going out and making all these expand going out and making and releasing all these expansion discs. That's what's killing them. That's what's financially put them in this situation. Instead of saying, hey, let's just do DLC, let's just do DLC, DLC, DLC. Instead, they constantly keep bringing out, they keep on issuing these expansion discs of all the fighting games. When easily, it's just, the easy answer is to do DLC. And like I said, they could have made a statement, they could have made a statement indicating that, oh, by the way, because of Tsunami, it's going to, the DLCs for Marvel vs. Capcom 3 is going to be a little late. It would have been easier and more affordable. And you want to know what else? Putting out a separate disc, a separate physical disc of a game like this, an expansion disc, a, putting out a separate physical expansion disc of a game like this, as well as doing a DLC mode for it, as well as making this DLC, because you might have the other game that came before it. it. Doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Do they not know people will go out, have gone out and bought Super Street Fighter 4? Do they not think, oh, these people bought the game already, we'll just do DLC. It makes more sense. Instead of doing, doing it two separate ways, doing it two separate ways, you're costing yourself money. You're putting yourself in a deeper hole than you don't need to be in. So now the obvious question is, what's going to happen with Capcom? What's going to happen once they reach the bot, once they run out of that 150 mil, mil, if you will? What's going to happen once they run out of the, that money that they have right now in the bank? Well, a few things. Positively, they can hopefully gain more money back by, by hopefully people buying their games, they can hopefully get that money back with people buying their games or downloading their games off the arcades of PS3 and Wii and of the uh, PlayStation Store, the Xbox Arcade and the Wii Shop. They can hopefully hope for that and that way they'll get some revenue back. But still, what are they going to do once they get to the point to where it's like they're not going to be able to even have enough to even consider planning another game or even enough to pay their employees and that's another thing they gotta pay the, the employees the people that develop the games so what's going to happen well it's obvious they're going to go in the same direction that THQ did they're going to go in the direction of having to sell off a lot of the franchise titles to different people to different other video game companies and quite honestly if that's the case here's who I think and hope gets what? I hope Namco, Namco, the ones that did one of my personal favorite games, the Soul Calibur 5 suit, Soul Calibur game. I hope Namco gets the Street Fighter series. I really do. I really hope they get the Street Fighter series. I really do. I, I really, really do. I really hope they get the Street Fighter series. Secondly, what about the Marvel uh, end of things? Well, you got Disney Interactive, right? Have Disney basically say, okay, who else is out there would like to take, would like to take on Marvel series? Who would like to do it? Real simple, again, obvious answer is Napco. If you want to continue doing the Marvel versus Street Fighter or Capcom series, that's the obvious answer right there. A lot of Capcom stuff from the Marvel vs. Capcom crossovers and all that, have it all go to Namco. That's what I look at. The Street Fighter series, the Marvel vs. Capcom series, if Capcom has to go down and has to sell the stock, has to sell the titles, have the Street Fighter series, have the Marvel vs. Capcom crossover series, have it go to Namco. That's the way I look at it. That's the way I look at it. Have it go to Namco. Or, if you want, if you really want, 
Have Netherlands be an option for some of your Capcom properties. Have Netherlands be an option. For me, Netherlands takes, you know, this would be a perfect fit for Netherlands. The Dark Stalker series. They could take that. Mega Man, Nintendo, perfect fit. It is a perfect fit for Nintendo, no doubt. So, those are some of the Capcom titles I believe would be perfect. Devil May Cry, go to Netherlands. Perfect. The Netherlands, um, Netherlands has done the Mortal Kombat series, would be perfect for Darkstalkers, and would be perfect for Devil May Cry. You know, let them take it. Let them take those titles. Let Mega Man go to Nintendo. Let Namco take the Street Fighter series, let them take the Time Splitter series, let them take the Marvel vs. Capcom crossover series, let them take those. Those are basically some of the places I believe would be good homes for these titles should Capcom end up in the same situation that THQ did at the, be at the end of last year. That's the way I look at it. Now you can agree or disagree with me, but that's just my honest opinion. But again, I believe Capcom wouldn't have put themselves in this situation if they would have focused more on the DLC. I mean, again, I can understand that they go by that old school mentality of, hey, let's always do an expansion disc, or back in the day, an expansion cartridge. And basically improve on what we already did. I can understand that, but today, things are different. I mean, hell, I mean, heck. They're getting a lot, they've gotten in a lot of trouble recently because of the Street Fighter Cross Tekken series. Look what happened there. So again, I believe, in my honest opinion, that Capcom, one of the main reasons they're putting this hole is they kept going with the expansion stuff. If you're going to expand, focus more on the DLC. That's what you need to do. Even if a game, like let's say Street Fighter 4, which is I'm trying to see what year this is, what year it came out. You know something like Street Fighter 4 is four years old, you should just continuously expand on it. That's what you need to do. Instead of always doing separate discs, which is gonna cost you money, which is gonna cost you money. Don't, which is going to, which is going to cost you money. Which is going to cost you money. Focus more on the DLC. DLC is was created for a reason. It was created for a reason to help expand your product on a more affordable level. So, my thoughts are, Capcom better start focusing more on the DLC expansion for some of their games, especially the fighting games, instead of continuously doing expansion discs. Because if they continue to go with that expansion ancient physical disc route, it's going to hurt them even more. So, my honest opinion, if, my honest opinion is that they got themselves into this, as the old saying goes, they got to find a way to get themselves out. And if one of the ways is to sell off some of the titles down the line, again, I've already mentioned, I've already mentioned, Time Splitters, Street Fighter series, Marvel vs. Capcom crossover series, should all go to Namco if that happens, if they have to sell off the titles. Mega Man, he should end up going over to Nintendo, Darkstalkers, Devil May Cry, you know, those titles can end up going over to Netherlands, Netherlands, because they could do good with them as well. But that's my honest opinion. You let me know what you guys think about it, and that's all I'm going to say on it. So until then, God bless, and take care. Comments are welcome.